This video is focusing on the skeleton and the muscles and it's part one of three videos and in this video we focus on the skeleton. This chapter can be divided into three sections or three parts. The first is the structure of the skeleton, then we focus on bone growth and remodeling and finally the muscles and the joints. So that's one way of organizing your study around this topic. So what are the functions of the skeleton? This is often asked on exams. Well, the first is support, then there's movement, protection, and finally the manufacture of components of the blood. So the red and white blood cells and the platelets are made in the bones of the skeleton. So what does support mean, the first function of the skeleton? Well, the skeleton provides that solid framework. It's a bit like scaffolding, so it holds everything up. So without our skeleton, we would be something softer. Look at the jellyfish here, for example. So the next function is movement and bones can only move because they're acting as levers. Muscles are contracting, so muscles are attached to the bones by tendons. When they contract, they lift the bone upwards and bones are connected to bones by ligaments. So it's a complicated system of levers, but one of the functions is movement and we move because of our skeletal muscles contracting. So function number three is protection. You've got the skull protecting the brain and you've the rib cage protecting the lungs and the heart. So these bones structures protecting these vital organs. So the last function is the manufacture of blood cells and platelets. So red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets are made in the red bone marrow of your bones and it's of particular bones which you have to be able to give examples of often asked in exams. So blood cells will be made in the long bones of the arms and the legs, the ribs, the sternum which is your breastbone, your pelvis, your skull and those individual bones, the vertebrae which make up your back. So next is on to the parts of the skeleton and the skeleton is divided into two parts, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. So how do I remember the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton? Well, just think of axial and axis, meaning central. So the earth is rotating on its axis or spinning on its axis. So it's going down the center of it. And the appendicular skeleton, think of appendages, things that hang off it. So let's go into that now. The axial skeleton is made up of the bones of the skull, the spine, which is made up of those individual vertebrae, so the vertebral column, the ribs, and the sternum, which is your breastbone. An easy way to help you remember the parts of the axial skeleton is to draw this little diagram. So start with a circle for the skull, then a line for the spine, and then you can put a little arrow at the end for the coccyx, the bottom of the spine, then a box for the rib cage and those ribs, and then a little dot in the center for the sternum, the breastbone. So the ribs are part of the axial skeleton and it's important to know that you have 12 pairs of ribs. Pairs one to seven are known as true ribs. This is because they wrap around from the back. They're attached at the back to the vertebrae, but they wrap around and they attach to the sternum, to the breastbone. Pairs eight, nine and 10. So ribs eight, nine and 10, those pairs, they're known as false ribs because they attach to the seventh pair. They don't attach to the sternum, to the breastbone. And then pairs 11 and 12 are known as the floating ribs because they don't attach to any other bone at the front. Another part of the axial skeleton are the bones of the spine, the vertebrae, and you have 33 vertebrae. So we're discussing the vertebrae, those 33 bones found in the back or the vertebral column, sometimes referred to as the spine, and it's divided into five regions. You have to know the name of each of those five regions and the number of vertebrae in each. So to learn the five regions, it's easy to use a rhyme. So let's use Charlie tells Larry something clever. So the first word is Charlie. So Charlie is cervical. Tells is thoracic. Larry is lumber. Something is sacral. Clever is coccygeal. So Gary gave us this rhyme and he's from the class of 2019. So thanks a mil, Gary. So you have the rhyme now to help you remember those five regions. What about the number of bones in each of those regions? Well, just learn them like a phone number. Just keep saying to yourself, seven, twelve, five, five, four, seven, twelve, five, five, four. So this is a very rough diagram of your vertebral column or your spine, and it's made up of those vertebrae. There are 33 of them, but the last nine are fused together. So they're stuck together and they can't move, but the others can move slightly. And there's a gap in between those others that aren't fused. And that gap is filled with this disc of cartilage. Cartilage is there to protect so it's cushioning and absorbing shock. That's how it's protecting. And if you have back problems, it's generally because the cartilage, the discs of cartilage have become torn or damaged. 
Cartilage is a connective tissue. It's made up of protein fibres, collagen fibres. It doesn't have a blood supply flowing directly through it, so that's why it's slow to heal. So we've covered all about the axial skeleton as much as we need to know. So now it's on to the appendicular skeleton and it's made up of two girdles, the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle, and also the bones of the arms and the legs. So let's begin with your pectoral girdle. Just think of your pecs, all of those people going to the gym to make their pecs bigger. So your pectoral girdle is made up of your two scapulae, so your two shoulder blades, and it's also made up of your two collarbones, your two clavicles. So the arms then attach to the pectoral girdle and the bones of the arms are the humerus, the radius and the ulna. And in pictures the ulna looks like it's beneath the radius, it's beside it but it helps you recognise it. So the bones of the hands, we have the carpals which are the bones in your wrist, then you've got the metacarpals, you can feel them or see them on the front of your hand, then you've got the bones of your fingers or your digits called the phalanges. And you have three phalanges in each digit, each finger, except for your thumb where you have two. So if you want to remember the bones of the hands, an easy way is to think of carpals and metacarpals, the C. So what do you do with your hand? You catch things, so carpals and catching. The pelvic girdle is split into two halves. Each half connects to the sacrum at the back and it's made up of the hip bones, which are really three bones fused together on each half. So the legs then attach into the pelvic girdle. You've got the femur, the tibia and then the fibula. So next it's the bones of the foot, very like the hand. You've got the tarsals, you've got the metatarsals and you've got the phalanges, which is the bones of the toes, those digits of the toes. So just think of tarsals, T for toes, T for tarsals. So far, what should I know? Well, make sure that you can list the functions of the skeleton. You know the parts of the axial skeleton. Remember that little hint, that little diagram I showed you how to draw? So know the number of vertebrae and the regions of the spine. So you remember the rhyme, Charlie tells Larry something clever and that phone number you have to remember. So know the number of ribs and be able to say which are true ribs, which are false ribs and which are floating ribs and why. Know the parts of the appendicular skeleton. So the two girdles and the bones of the arm and the hands and then the bones of the legs and the feet. So lots of details there and you would be surprised if you looked at exam questions on the skeleton how often this part of the chapter gets examined. So best of luck. The best way to do well you know is to use your book but write your own notes. That's really important and do exam questions. Best of luck. So just to tell you that the icons used in this video are from the Noun Project. I'm a pro member and these videos do not replace using your textbook. They're not made for monetary gain and they're not intended for commercial use. Good luck.